All right, everybody. So today I am going to build a toolbox power station. Uh, so that essentially means I'm going to take all the individual components, batteries, uh, inverters, solar charge controllers, monitors, etc., and mount them inside of this toolbox. Um, I think it was about two months ago I did a video where I built my own power station. And essentially it was a two-part two -part component. Uh, I built a head unit which contained the inverter, solar charge controller, monitor, um, circuit protection, and so a couple other things. And then mounted the batteries in parallel with a quick action plug-in so they could all be plugged in together uh, really easy. But it was essentially a two-piece component. Um, people seem to really like that video, at least for the standards of my channel. And, uh, but I had a lot of comments about some people talking about, I should have some sort of container to where, um, the components don't have direct exposure to dust. And I have other people who indicated that it would be pretty cool to have a setup to where it was in one singular toolbox. So I reached out to my partners in the product community. So Bouge RV, and I'm very grateful they provided this 2000 watt inverter and this Sunflow 30 amp charge controller. And then I reached out to Vader Battery, I think that's how you pronounce it, V-A-T-R-E-R, -E and they provided two self-heating 100 amp hour batteries. And of course I went out and bought the other subcomponents. This is a 15 gallon DeWalt branded rolling toolbox. Uh, this was about 75 bucks. Um, bought some associated wire, some bus bars, uh, this one will have a cooling system in it, and just other little odds and ends like that that was uh, part of it, including this uh, Linux color battery monitor. All right, so this is how it ended up laying out inside of there. I've got the two 100 amp hour ba batteries uh, connected with a little hook and loop uh, and tilted on their side, wired in parallel. As you can see, the inverter is positioned uh, vertically, immediately adjacent to that, and solar charge controller. Back here, we have the two bus bars, and um, the negative from the battery wires directly to the negative bus bar, and the positive goes through this breaker for both circuit protection, and it also allows me to essentially be able to shut down the system. I was amazed at just how perfectly sized this toolbox turned out to be. It took a lot of figuring and thinking about how to position it, but I'm pretty happy with it. Um, as you'll see, this pink stuff here is just insulation. This battery, other than them being connected to themselves, it's essentially just wedged in here. So this down here is the solar charge controller, and this just talks about how fantastic... Uh, this toolbox just turned out to be the cooling fins actually fit in between there. So what that allowed me to do, it just so happened to be just the right size of this solar charge controller. If you guys can see right there, the these little fins that were part of the toolbox slid right into those heat that heat sink. And this is just sits down there and is held in with friction. Um, so what that means is it's very easy for me to pull components out of this. Um, as you guys can see, what we have up here is a uh, circuit protection, but it also kind of functions like a switch. So if I want to shut off the solar, I can. And the two solar inputs are right here. Sticking out of this, let me go into standard mode here. You guys can see those two right here. Right here is the DC output just via a cigarette lighter socket and all of that is wired down below this piece of wood that fits in there and i'm explain why i have that wood in there we'll get a little flashlight down in there so you could see the two solar you could see the cigarette lighter plug in there and all the wires for the solar charge controller and all those devices run underneath the solar charge controller so if i needed to access them I just pull that out and then they come up into here uh, and come into the bus bars. Right here where my light's shining to the right there, that is the shunt for the monitor, which sits right here. It 
tells us our voltage and solar input, etc. This right here is the remote on for the Bouge RV uh, inverter. So what that does is you can remotely shut it off or you can turn it on. Um, in this case, if you had it inside the box here. So right here is a fan. And then right here is a power strip that includes some USB plugs. So these wires for the two monitors and for that um, power strip, and I relieved the plastic right there, come up over the top. And then right here, and this is where I'm going to get into the fan and this piece of wood that I pulled out right here. So this right here is, I believe it would be called a thermo switch. It has a little uh, heat sensor, which I put uh, against the inverter here. And then this is wired into this fan down here, essentially via a switch. And then this has power. And what that does, and this is in Celsius, is you can adjust this so uh, the fan will kick on. So let's... Let's go ahead and lower this real quick here. See if we can get the fan to kick on. There we go. Right here. And then now this fan right here is running. Now, here's my thought. One of my biggest concerns about this setup was heat dissipation. Um, you know, usually, obviously, you want these inverters to have as much airspace around them. Uh, but the flip side, and one argument I would make is that uh, in a purchased solar char uh, power bank, you know, obviously they're going to have to confine this stuff. So this has, this particular inverter has two fans, and they're pretty strong, and there's an internal system that kicks them on when it reaches a certain temperature. So what you see up here is the intakes for that. And then those fans are pointed down toward the bottom. So when they're intaking air in the top, they're pushing the hot air down the bottom. So what this fan does is this fan is pulling from down there. So down in that little crevice. Sorry, I know it's not focusing down there. There we go. That would be where the hot air is blowing out. So therefore, if I put this piece of wood over the top of the fan, it's not perfectly airtight. But what that's going to do is it's going to force that this air or this fan right here to pull more of the air from the output of the inverter. And then on top here, what I did is I put this vent. As a cool little side note, I put the uh, thermo switch to where I can actually look at it through the vent. I just did that for fun. I thought it kind of looked cool. Now you'll notice one thing right here is this vent is to the right of the top of the inverter or where the intake is. You see that? See this vent right here is to the right and that is purposeful. The reasoning is this. Um, it is sometimes said that you shouldn't mount the inverters like this. And I, I want to make one thing clear. You guys don't rely upon me on this. Do do you know? Do what you feel comfortable with. However, I'll say for myself, I began to research and say, well, why? What is the rationale? And the rationale was for not putting it like here was debris, uh, at least from my, what my research showed. The fear that debris could get in here, maybe short something out or cause damage to the fan. So my thought process is, and what kind of one of the genesis of building this at all uh, in the first place was in normal use this top will be shut. So those vents are going to, you know, because this is offset, debris and stuff is not going to be able, easily able to get in there. However, from the inside portion, as you guys can see that I had to relieve this right here. So that way when it sits over the inverter, it holds it in place. But you can see right here, there's free access to get the air. So the theory is this. Inverter internal fan comes on and takes air through this, which comes through this vent. It blows out the bottom. And then if, if it reaches a certain predetermined temperature, this fan right here will kick on and pull the air out. So it's kind of this rotating cycle. And then the 
air for this or the the air pressure for this would come both from the air coming out of this but there is also still a cavity down here that air can be sucked from if need be one thing i wanted to mention was that both the the solar charge controller and the inverter from Bouge RV uh, have Bluetooth capability with app monitoring. That also includes uh, built-in Bluetooth in these Vader batteries. So though I have an external monitor to watch various parameters, the real nice thing is, um, you know, you can once you know when you have these powered up, uh, you can open up the app and you can monitor all kinds of components change all kinds of settings. Because I know one of the things someone might be looking at is this solar charge control is buried in there. How would you change settings? Well, I mean, frankly, it's far easier to change the settings on the app. So there's really no need to actually have to constantly monitor the um, solar charge controller unit. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Maybe I'm a bit of a Luddite, but I typically don't like downloading a bunch of apps on my phone and I try to avoid it. Um, but the app functionality of, you know, batteries and inverters and all kinds of devices in the camper RV world is becoming so ubiquitous that, and I have to admit, it it, it does, it is really nice to just, you know, plug in the app and know exactly what's going on. So, um, but uh, some of you guys were wondering how I would do that. Uh, but I also have a backup, you know, I have a good old traditional monitor, traditional um, remote turn on here because you could actually turn this uh, uh, inverter here on and off just via the app if you wanted to, which I thought was kind of neat. All right, guys. So in conclusion, this is probably one of my favorite little projects I've done recently. Ever since power banks or solar generators, whatever you want to call them, have become a thing, uh, I've been enamored with them. I've been, I've, I've been enamored with that idea of having something that was portable, that had all of these different capacities and you know, to take, to have good solar input, batteries, inverters, USB plugs, monitors, everything in one rolling unit. And, you know, there's a lot of great uh, power banks on the market that you can purchase. In fact, I've reviewed quite a number of them on my channel. And I think power banks, you know, that you would purchase from the store or so forth is a great option for many people, even in some cases myself. However, I do think there is a value to being able to build your own. Now, the first thing in the elephant in the room is, is this cheaper to build your own? And I'll be honest with you, uh, there's a lot of variables, different prices of power banks out there. There's some that don't have these exact capabilities, but just in a very general and broad sense, not really, to be honest with you. Uh, especially if you buy a power bank on sale, um, I would be hard pressed to build one with individual components for a lot less money. I don't think it's more, but I don't certainly think you're saving money. But that kind of comes down, well, what is the reason that you'd build these? And it is for, A, it could just be that sense of doing something on your own, you know, being creative, figuring out a problem. And that sense ability also of knowing that if you made it and there was a problem with it, you're probably going to have a better sense of knowing how to repair it. Whereas if you buy a power bank, I, it, it could be challenging just even opening it up to get in there, let alone voiding warranties and all those kinds of things. Another thing is, so, so that first point, I guess you would say, is, is just a sense of autonomy, a sense of independence, and the enjoyment of a little project that you could do in your garage. Uh, number two... I think is the ability to customize. Like, so for example, this one, um, this is two 100 amp hour batteries. And for context, most of the bigger power banks that you can buy in the market sit somewhere around 2000 watt hours. Two 100 amp hours batteries come out to, if I'm doing the math off the top of my head correctly, about 2,560 watt hours, which is, a little bit bigger it's notably bigger there so i guess to the point of customization you know you could put in whatever size batteries you want of course if they're you have more battery capacity you have to have a bigger toolbox if you wanted a a smaller more handy toolbox and something like this uh you know less battery capacity but you have that flexibility 
Another thing uh, from a component standpoint that I like having the flexibility of building my own is the solar charge controller. One of my biggest complaints about a lot of power banks out in the market is you see a lot of variability in terms of the total solar input capacity. Some are really low, some might tout, uh, tout high solar input capacity, but the voltage range of your panels vary a little bit. And you know, most of the time that's not a problem, but if you're working with bigger solar arrays, such as if you had built like a little unit like this to power a camper or your van or whatever, being able to pick your own solar uh, charge controller is really important to making sure you can get all that fine tuned. Plus, you know, you can modify what all of the different uh, uh, monitoring systems look like. And I gotta be honest with you, um, I think this is pretty good looking. I mean, certainly it's not as clean of a configuration as a mass produced one, but I think this is pretty nice. And, you know, it's pretty handy being able to roll around and, but, but the thing is, this is just one example to perhaps serve as inspiration for you out there. You know, there's all kinds of different toolbox options. Um, one thing I would probably suggest though is stick with something plastic, something non-conductive. It's probably going to uh, be a little lighter, but it's also going to help prevent possibility of any shorts because there is a lot of wires around in there, you know, with things, different things rubbing around. Um, but the final thing is this, is one of the big concerns, especially if you spend $1,000 plus on a big power bank, is if it fails and you're out of warranty or, you know, whatever the case is, maybe warranty is not an option, Building your own like this gives you the, op the, the opportunity to replace components if they fail, as opposed to having to throw the whole thing out. So in summary, saving money may not be the main reason why you'd build your own component system like this. It may just be, it's a fun project for you. You want customers to be able to customize it the way you want it. And then finally, you want that peace of mind knowing that uh, if a single component fails, uh, it doesn't risk taking out the entire device. You can probably, if you built it, diagnose the problem relatively quick and replace a component. So um, again, guys, I just wanted to thank Vader Batteries and Bouge RV for helping make this video possible. Um, I hope you guys uh, enjoy this and this gives you guys some inspiration. Um, I would call this kind of an intermediate project. Um, you probably don't want to take this on unless you have some knowledge of what each individual component does and you feel comfortable on electricity because you got to keep in mind these lithium batteries this is a lot of power capacity right here um, but with with some basic uh, electrical knowledge i think this is achievable by most people um, uh, i didn't get into it too much but wire gauge size is very important remember there is very easy to use and free tables out there uh, for dc wire guide uh, wire gauge sizes to make sure that you're using the right wire gauges and you guys probably also saw in there a couple places where I'd actually had two wires that were connected in uh, you can do that also and there's also tables out there to show combined uh, wire gauge uh, like say if you're gonna put two uh, four gauge wires together what is the ultimate gauge of the final circuit so make sure that you guys follow those protocols and be safe and let me know what you think thanks for watching